In this example, we're going to calculate the equivalent force exerted on a wall from a height of fluid. We're told that the mass density of the fluid, so rho equals 1000 kilograms per meter cube. So this is the mass density of water. We're also told that the height of the fluid is 4 meters and we're told that to consider the out of plane width of the wall so this direction to be equal to just one meter a unit length along the wall so the first thing we're going to do is calculate what the pressures are so we'll calculate the pressure here at zero depth and the pressure here at the four meters depth. So pressure at naught meters depth equals naught. And the pressure at four meters is equal to rho g h which is then equal to 1,000 times 9.81 times the depth of the water, which is 4 metres. Um, performing the calculation, we get that P from 4 metres of height of water is 39,000 240 newtons per meter squared from these two values of the pressure we remind ourselves we have a triangular distribution and therefore we can calculate a value here which is the average pressure exerted on the wall and therefore we can kind of consider that we have this pressure acting on this area, so four meters and one meter. So let's calculate our average pressure. So P average is equal to one half of the pressure at four, which was 39,240, plus the value at the top, and that gets us for the average pressure exerted on the wall is 19,620 newtons per meter squared. And from this average pressure, we can convert to the total force. So from pressure, we're now going to calculate the force using P equals force times area and now in this case our area is equal to four meters high by one meter out of plane which equals four meters squared so our equivalent force Coming from this total height of fluid, then, is equal to the average pressure multiplied by the area over which this average pressure is acting. So that is our 19620 multiplied by 4 meters squared is now equal to 78,000. 480 newtons so going back to our original problem we now know this value f but we don't know yet where f is acting but if we remind ourselves what we know about centroids we know that the centroid of a triangle is one third up from the right angle 
or two thirds down away from the other corners. So we use that to tell us where the line of action of this force is. So the line of action is then, and I'm going to label this here, the line of action as H bar. So the line of action H bar equals two thirds of the total depth H, which equals two thirds, two thirds multiplied by the total height H4, which equals 2.67 meters. And that is measured from the surface. So from the surface down. So at this point our problem is solved. In the method we chose to solve it, or the method I've shown, we got from pressures, we calculated an average pressure, which we could then convert to a force. And so once we had our equivalent force from multiplying average pressure times area, we then worked out where the line of action is. Before we finish this though, I'm going to present a slightly alternative way of looking at this problem. So, if we look at the pressure, but we calculate it has units of newtons per meter squared. And therefore, we can convert this to a distributed loading. And we can do this by multiplying by the out of plane width. So in this case, this is one meters. And then we proceed as we've done for the previous few examples on distributed loading. And we know we have this distributed loading and we have load intensity W0, kilonewtons per meter, and load intensity at 4 meters, and an equivalent load, FEQV, which is exactly the same as what we've calculated above. So that's just an alternative way that you could approach this problem.